Hey friends, I'm here with my favorite astrophysicist and, and likely yours, Neil deGrasse Tyson, will be in the Winsboro Opera House Tuesday, June 18th at 7.30. Hello, thanks for talking to me. Thanks, thanks for having me on. And let me make it clear, I will not be singing opera. <laughs> <laughs> you could if you wanted to. The, the acoustics are, are just... I'm going to put that up front. This will be your seventh time over the many years performing in the Winsboro Opera House or, or lecturing in the Winsboro Opera House um, and that stands for. I, I didn't uh, know it was that many. I'm I'm, I'm flattered to be invited back all these years. Yeah. So you are. I don't force myself upon a city. I what happened? The, no, the, we the theater say, comes to. I have a, a speaking manager, and they and what I do is I offer a a list of a dozen or fifteen possible topics that they can choose from. So I'm not here to sell you anything, although yeah. I always do have a book that just came out a few months ago. <laughs> there is always a book, but it is not a book tour. It's not a, a tour in the traditional sense that we think of these things. I'm here as a servant of people's curiosity, cosmic curiosity, and I'm delighted to be invited back. And uh, this year, people chose the subject. I have one titled, This Just In. Yep. latest discoveries in the universe mm -hmm. and you can't go wrong with that especially given all that we've come to learn in recent months weeks uh, certainly in the last couple of years so i, I look forward to bringing uh, that frontier down to earth right there in dallas uh, anything you can give us a sneak peek in particular the, uh, of those latest developments in science that you can kind of uh, you mean you want me to tell you now that way you don't have to go? Is this yeah, what so you you're... don't have to. No, no, just give us a sneak peek. Like, uh, like, a, hey, I'm going to talk about this and this, you know. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, And then yeah. you'll go into uh, detail. No, there's, there's you know. all manner of things. So I'll give you an update on what's going yeah. on in space, who's landed on the moon. China just deployed uh, the Chinese flag on the <laughs> our side of the moon, which is freaking out our people. Okay, that just happened uh, like a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'll give you the latest thinking on on are we in a simulation uh, any advances on that there's uh, that's a little crazy what's going uh -huh. on there um uh, latest in the search for life the discovery of exoplanets uh, it's it's very hodgepodgey because it's not it's the 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 common thread is not so much what topic within astrophysics the common thread is if it's anything new in astrophysics it's going to land in this talk so yeah. I, I i look forward to it and i you know, I comb the headlines. It'll be headlines you might have seen. Uh, uh -huh. But now we get to delve in a little more deeply. Some headlines said, we're going to have to rethink the Big Bang. Because headlines love saying that. Right, it yeah. Gets, it, it gets you to click on them. But no, that would not. That is not going to happen. Um, yep. But well, we'll tell you what led to those thoughts. That's and right. uh, discoveries by, the, by the, um, the James Webb Space Telescope. Get the latest updates on what it has been finding. Uh, also, there's some other news. For example, we lost one of the gyros on the Hubble telescope, and so this is this is the kind of, you know, it's the normal aging process if yeah. we could call it that for orbiting satellites. If you lose a gyro, then it's no longer pointable with the in the way it had been, and starts losing its functionality. So I'll give a I'll give a a a a cemetery update on the Hubble telescope. Oh, <laughs> and other telescopes are coming online. Uh, the Vera Rubin telescope is going to take a picture of the night sky every few hours uh -huh. and stitch it together into what is basically a movie uh -huh. so that you can see things that change. In the old days, we would just go take a picture of the night sky, bring the data home. And if something was in your image, but it wasn't there a few years ago or the night before, you wouldn't have any way to know that. But now, so this allows us to discover asteroids that could have our name written on them in a bad way, have our name written on them. We'll lose so our there's gyros. a lot of new ways we're find, ob obtaining data, a lot of new thinking with the data we already have. And like I said, you can't do this without an update on what everybody's doing in space. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Chinese. So now you don't have to go. So you, you uh, yeah. Just... No, no, no. I see. For, first of all, you gave all that, and I don't know anything about any of it except <laughs> the headline.
And as if, if I remember my headlines, you guys have a basketball team in the finals. We do. The Dallas now, I, now I hope they're not playing a home game the same night as my talk. <laughs> you know, they uh, uh, they they may be. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be competing with them. We'll see. You know, I haven't looked ahead that far. Uh, they're down to 2 at the moment. So oh, um, okay. yeah, so they got a big game tonight. So we'll see. I paid a little less attention when the Knicks got got knocked out. Sure. They... I gotta say, I love the work that you do. Um, putting uh, mainstream uh, spin uh, and interest uh, into scientific curiosity. So um, how did you find yourself doing that? How did you go from, hey, I'm going to learn and I'm going to write papers and I'm going to um, teach uh, in a classroom, you know, and say, how, actually, what I'm going to do is take this and teach the whole world these things. Was yeah, no, that was not in my plan. I didn't know. I, I still don't want to do it. I want to go back to the lab. Oh, you're good <laughs> at it. Send me back to the lab. That's yeah. where I, that's where I want to be, either the lab or a beach in the Bahamas, all right, just yeah. someplace. Yeah. So uh, what had occurred over the years was, uh, as any um, uh, any of my colleagues know this, you know, if you if you do astrophysics and you sit next to someone in a plane, and then you exchange, oh, what do you do? What do you do? If you say you're an astrophysicist, that's the your plane ride is is you know you you've lost all of your private time for the rest of that plane ride because they're oh tell me about black holes and aliens and god and yeah. and and it goes on and on and on so we all have this experience in my field and it's we sh we're i think a little bit proud of that or rather charmed by it that what we do professionally excites the public on some level that may even be genetic like in our DNA, we all look up and we all wonder what is our place in the universe. And I'm tasked with being on the frontier, helping helping us all to try to understand what those answers, the answers are to those questions that we all have. And I say, okay, I'm happy to be a servant of the public's appetite for the universe. And in that role, um, I, I think I would be irresponsible if I didn't ascend to that it, it's it's a it's a duty it's a, a it's responsibility because yeah. most of what happens in my field is paid for by tax based sources the national science foundation especially nasa and you paid those taxes okay especially in texas you got some very real nasa happening in texas yeah. uh, over in houston of course uh more so but uh, and there's some rocket launches over in West Texas. Uh, you know, this space happening in Texas. You have a you have a right to know how all that money's being spent. And so part of me is also fulfilling that mission as well. I hope society becomes more scientifically literate than it is, because it's clear that we are not yet prepared to enter the very future that we're creating for ourselves. Uh, out of wanton neglect of what role science can and should play in securing our health, our wealth, and our security of the future. I assume you have um, innate um, ability and, and passion for your subject and your field, and that helps you succeed. Uh, but I also assume that there's some kind of um, uh, motivational key, something that you keep close to your heart in, in your mind that keeps you always moving forward and pushing forward. And, you know, we talked about the impact you hope you have, but is there anything that you remind yourself of that keeps you motivated and keeps you moving for those of us? Yeah, I think that's an excellent and deep question. As, as simply as you put it, it's actually a deep question. Maybe you knew that. <laughs> I, I'm way smart. Uh, <laughs> I just don't really seem it. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and only occasionally do people notice but otherwise, yeah 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 i'm I, shy i think you're getting at the heart of what the meaning of life is mm -hmm. for any one of us the meaning of life won't be the same from one person to the next necessarily a lot of people search for meaning in life and i think that's a mistake or it, at best it's incomplete because, yeah, you can search. Is it behind a tree? Is it under a rock? Is it after some pilgrimage? I, I don't know. Maybe. But I think we have the power to manufacture meaning in our lives. And for me, I draw meaning in my life from two or three very simple principles. One of them is, today, I want to make sure I've learned something that I didn't know yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I want to make that true every day. 
think of how many days you have been alive and no longer in school. We think of school, that's the time to learn. And when you graduate, that's the time to live. No, that's, that's, if that's the case, you have ossified in whatever were you, was your thinking on graduation day. And these are the people who, this is how I used to do it. And that's how it's going to be forevermore. And that these young whippersnappers, they don't know what they're there. No, you're the one that, that is lost touch. Okay. So I want to make sure I learn something every day. That's an important to me. Another one is take the little bit of my time or energy and invest it in a way that lessens the suffering of others. It could be simple as helping someone across the street, yeah. um, leaving a little extra tip in the jar. Uh, it, it can be simple. It doesn't have to re be a realignment of your life's priorities. But if every day you, the suffering of someone else is lessened or their joy is enhanced, which is a, a similar uh, outcome, I think, uh, that's a good day. Plus just curiosity about the universe. I st I maintained a, a, I'm pretty sure it's the same curiosity I had in, in childhood. As children, we're all curious. Mm -hmm. Every one of us, and somehow it gets beaten out of us. It gets, you know, we spend the first few years of our lives being taught to walk and talk by our parents and the rest of our lives where they're telling us to shut up and sit down, right? So there are forces operating against our curiosity mm -hmm. that if you manage to maintain it into adulthood, those make the best kind of scientists because they're, they're curious about everything. Yeah. Nothing, nothing is closed off from their investigation from their wide-eyed uh, search for the objective truths in the world. And so I maintain that curiosity mixed in with the other two items. And so that's what gives meaning and for me, purpose in life. I think we're we're almost out of time. Uh, thanks for your gener generosity of, of your time and talking to you. It's been a pleasure. But I, I would say I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that my 10-year-old um, daughter, Anna, I told her that I was interviewing you and she wanted me to heartily congratulate you on your brilliant turn as Waddles the Pig on Gravity Falls on the Disney Channel. So that was a, someone else who 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 voiced over that. No, no, it was not. I think no, right, we paused on, it when we were watching. That's a great show, by the way. Like uh -huh. we, some stuff you watch with your kid and you're like, okay, let's get this over with. But I yeah, watched it was Disney HD, whatever that branch Disney of Disney HD, is. It was for like the little older... Kids yeah, still. Disney's like for tweens, yeah. uh, not not infants or, or toddlers or kids, but a little older. Uh, Gravity Falls. Yeah, hilarious. Uh, I was invited to be the voice of Waddles the pig in one episode, <laughs> and even only one part of that episode. Right, where the pig through some magic potion got really really smart. Uh huh. And I and I'm honored. And it, what's fun is at the end of uh, if I give a public talk, uh, a kid will run up to me with a picture of waddles and they <laughs> say, would you sign this and all the grown-ups in the room say what what are you doing <laughs> so it's a very private uh, understanding between uh -huh. me and the 10 year old child who's walking yep. up to me with the picture of waddles for me to sign yeah that was great and you almost solved the mystery of the universe in that episode but then you went back to being a regular pig and that was yeah crazy. yeah I, I wasn't brilliant for long i became a pig again very quickly <laughs> very good well i thanks for that uh thank you for everything you do uh and thanks for talking to me today folks uh please neil degrasse tyson this just in latest discoveries in the universe uh at the wind spear tuesday night attpac.org get the handful of seats that may be left over there and uh thanks again Appreciate all right you. thank you for having me